early morning catechism. Again, we are studying the Constitution on the Church from the Second Vatican Council. Today we are going to look at Chapter 5, which is entitled, The Call to Holiness. You know, sometimes when I've asked children, who's a holy person, they'll raise their hands and say the name of a priest or a sister, or they'll say, my grandma, because she always prays. And so, and that's fine, but people have the idea that those who pray, whether it's a prayer book or a rosary, those who pray are holy people. Well, you know, that's half true. It occurs to me that throughout the chapter on holiness, the bishops of the world are constantly talking about two things, which are very familiar to us, love of God and love of neighbor, prayer and charity. They go hand in hand, and all people are called to that kind of holiness. It says in sacred scripture, this is the will of God, your sanctification. And that's not meant for bishops or priests alone. That is meant for the entire people of God. The bishops say in the Vatican document that the Holy Spirit moves us interiorly to love God with our whole being and to love one another as Christ loved them. We are sanctified. We are made holy through baptism, and throughout our lives, we are to live the life we began at baptism. After all, God himself came to live within us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, at our baptism. The council further states, it is quite clear that all Christians in any state or walk of life are called to the fullness of Christian life and to the perfection of love. And by this holiness, a more human manner of life is fostered also in earthly society. And this makes me go way back to chapter one. Christ is the light of all nations. And how is Christ to be the light of our earthly society? Through the way that all people, through their baptism, live their call to holiness, through love of God, and through works of charity. So let us now look at the different ways that different people in the church are called to live a holy life. First of all, we turn to the bishops. And the council says that bishops are to live a life of holiness through prayer, sacrifice, preaching, service. And they are to fulfill the duty of pastoral love. Then the council turns to priests. And the Council Fathers mention the fact that priests often do a humble and hidden service. They state that the priest is to pray and offer sacrifice for their people and for the whole people of God, appreciating what they do and imitating what they touch with their hands. That really touched me. They are to imitate what they touch with their hands. In other words, Jesus Christ, whose body they hold in their own hands. They go on to talk about married couples and parents. They are to support one another with faithful love. They are to train their children in doctrine. They are to witness the fruitfulness of Holy Mother Church. 
and they are to share in the love with which Christ loved the church. And so in the, their own fruitfulness as a married couple, they are to give witness of the fruitfulness of the entire church. Then the council goes on to talk about widows and single people. They greatly contribute to the holiness and activity of the church. For both groups of people, they have more time, depending on their situation, they have more time and maybe more freedom to extend their works of charity. And I know that widows especially use that time in their life to grow in their knowledge of the faith. I bet half my Bible class is made up of widows. Then there are all those engaged in human work. They promote the betterment of human society and the whole of creation. And they imitate Jesus the carpenter. Then those, there are those who suffer, those who suffer poverty, sickness, and other hardships, including persecution. They are united to Christ and they imitate Christ who suffered for the salvation of the world. The Council Fathers point out that martyrdom is the supreme test of love, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And lastly, the Council Fathers speak about those who profess the evangelical councils, that is, the vows, the religious vows, they foster in a special way the holiness of the church. And that leads us to the next chapter, which we will do in the next lesson, the chapter on religious life.